a strong force. And they will come and they will just raid the villages. And you know how it is. You're there. And you look up and see, dang, they just, the words that just tossed his body into him. Now he was dead, the Bible said, because they were burying him. They tossed his body into the grave of Elijah. Show you the power of God. Elijah was a very prominent and yeah. prophet of God. Yeah. He was a mighty warrior for God. He was a great teacher of God. Yeah. Elijah. Yes. But no matter how great you are, God will let you sometime go to sleep. That's right. Elijah being a man of God. And this is not Elijah. Because Elijah was also a great man of God. The word tells us over there in 2 Kings chapter 2 that Elijah was caught up in a chariot of fire and horses of fire. Elijah was caught up and Elijah being his helper he saw him go up into heaven. And the word of God says that as Elijah was getting ready he knew it was time to go. Elijah with his master. And everywhere Elijah was going that day he tried to leave Elijah behind. He was just testing it because he knew Elijah was to take he left off him. And the word said he kept telling him to stay here while I go there. But the word said Elijah would not let him out of sight. Faith is something important by us not to let people out of our sight. We have tried to follow God. Because the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12 says that we ought to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. So if you got a leader that's falling after Jesus, it's okay to follow your leader. Yes, All right. yes, the word of God said that Elisha told Elijah what he wanted because Elijah asked his servant Elisha, what is it that you want from me? And he said, I want a double portion of the spirit. And Elijah said, that's a hard thing you ask. But if you see me when I go, God the Father will do that for you. So Elijah was not going to let it get out of his sight. He was not going to let it get out of his sight. And the word of God said that as, as the chariot came and the world the world we had caught up Elijah and he was caught up in the air and he threw his mouth on his coat back down and Elijah was wiping his father come up. I like it that when Jesus was being ascended into heaven, the disciples were standing there and they were watching their master go up. I thought that was somewhat sad because you know how it is when someone you love is about to leave you, your heart is a little sad. You're happy for them, but you also sad because we have separation. Yes. And Elisha saw his master go up. And God honored his request. From that moment forward, Elisha took up the mantle of Elijah. And he had that double portion of Holy Ghost filled power. Yes. And here in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 13, the word of God says that Elijah got sick. And he died. All right. And for his bones to be that he had been dead for a while. Yes. But the word goes on to say that when those friends saw the Moabites coming, they just tossed their friend's body into Elijah's grave. And the Bible says that that dead man, when his body touched Elijah's body, God quickened him. And he got up. And I had with my mind's eye. Now his friends are all right. This dead man probably get up and look around. See his friend, and they take off running too. So he can imagine it. The, the, the friends running for their life. And the dead man running after them. And then they look back, they probably put that thing on a couple notches. They really got some bone power going in. Because so you running, and the person you put in the grave chasing you. I didn't say that, the word said that. Talking about the Lord, the power of God. So run as fast as you can. This miracle God used today is a lesson to teach us yes. that we ought to run from sin. Yes. Now, now, the devil had these men run, yes. but they were running because the mobile, that was not God. Yes. The mobiles were being used by Satan. Yes. And I want you to know, if you're not running now, God wants you to run from sin. Yes. Now, you either will be running into sin, or you be running away from sin, or you be running because of sin. But run. Anytime 
You have to ask this question. Let's run with it. Run. Yeah. And run as fast as you can. Yeah. Because if you run it from sin, that means you run it into Jesus' yeah. right. You run into holiness. Yeah. You run it into righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. And you in the state, in God's arm, you are safe. Yeah. Yes. Paul tells us yeah. in Hebrews 12 that we ought to lay aside every weight and sin that so easily to set us. Right. Run as fast Run. as you can. Yes. Today we're going to share a story about three a different counts. We're going to share, share one that can be running because of sin. Uh -huh. Then we're going to talk about another one of God's people who was running from sin. And then we're going to share another account of a story in the Bible about somebody running because of sin. Amen. And I pray that as the word go forth today that you will find yourself in one of these characters. And either one that you find yourself in. If you are not running to Jesus, turn around right. and run to Jesus. Amen. You know, Satan has a compass. And that compass that he has is going to lead you to Sin Boulevard. All right. Say Sin Boulevard with me. Sin Boulevard. And on Sin Boulevard, you're going to find all types of things. You're going to find lying. You're going to find homosexuality. You're going to find cheating. You're going to find stealing. You're going to find murder. You're going to find hatred. You're going to find evil thoughts. All types of things we found on Sin Boulevard. But if you run from sin and run to Jesus, you'll find yourself on Holy Ghost Boulevard. And on Holy Ghost Boulevard, there is deliverance, yes. there is salvation, yes. there is healing, there is forgiveness, there is love, yes. there is eternal life right. on Holy Ghost Boulevard. Come on, run as fast as you, as you can. All right. The Word of God tells us in 2 Samuel chapter 11 about one of his servants called David. David ran into sin. Mm -hmm. The word says that David being the king of Israel, David was a great fighter. He was a mighty warrior. The word says in the time of peace, David got up in the nighttime, evening time. And David got up on top of his house, his rooftop. Being a king, he was looking all around his kingdom. All right. But it's nothing wrong with just looking because you need to be aware. You need to be watchful. But if you are not careful, you'd be running into sin. The word says David saw this woman taking a bath. And she was a very beautiful woman. The word says that David began to inquire about who this woman was. The word says that David not only inquired, he found out who her name was, but he also found out who her husband was. All right, well, all right. Talk about running into sin. Yes. The word says that King David sent for this woman, Bathsheba. And the word says that not only he sent for her, but he slept with her. Right. Talk about running into sin. Yes. And then Bathsheba go back home, find out that she's pregnant because of that experience, that encounter, running into sin. Yes. The word says that she sent word to King David and told him that she was pregnant. All right. And the word says that King David sent for Uriah. Now he's in battle, a very loyal fighter, very loyal soldier. Uriah, they're in battle fighting for his country. The word says that King David sent for him. Uriah came home. And because he loved God's people, and he loved his king, and he loved the kingdom he was serving, he wouldn't even go home. Right. He stayed there. And the word said he slept around the door of the king. Right. He was protecting the king. Yes, Lord. Yes. David, right into sin. He done made one mistake. And you know how this sin is progressing. Yes. You do one thing, you got to do another sin and cover that one up. Right. Come on, run it into sin now. Yes. Word said, run as fast as you can. Yes. David should have been running. Because see, David know what it means to run. Yes. 